Well, welcome everybody to this episode of the podcast show. My very special guest is Dr. David Shirazi. Welcome, Dave. Yes, thank you for having me. Okay, so this amazing doctor has done so many things in his past to get him to this day. You know, he's um, started off with a psychology degree and then moved on to a master's of science uh, into traditional oriental medicine. And then he went on to a doctorate in dental surgery. And he's progressed even beyond that because he teaches around the world in the subject matters of um, cranial sacral pain, that's facial pain, and also sleep disorder breathing because he's an expert in that too. He's trained in that <laughs> in addition to his acupuncture and the use of orthodontics. So welcome, mm -hmm. Dave. And um, yeah. just give us a little insight. I know you're passionate about helping people, but... What has really led you to this point in your life with your career? Yeah. So, I mean, just to get the chronology, as you mentioned, so I started off as a dentist, you know, after school, and then I became uh, an oriental medical doctor after that. And really my intention was to not practice it. I, I, want, I wanted to, like when I have my own family, I wanted to take care of my children in a very holistic way. So that is why I studied it. And as it turns out, it works great for pain and sleep. Um, and then uh, after the Chinese medicine, that's when I did the uh, master's in psychology. And then I became a sleep technologist so I could conduct sleep studies and I have my own sleep lab as well. So uh, it's one of those things that the profession found me, you know, if you've ever heard that profession, that expression before. Um, I got out when I came out of dental school, I was studying what's called functional orthodontics where let's say if someone has an underbite or overbite or crowded teeth, we do skeletal changes to bring the jaws where it needs to be, get the airways opened up and create space for the teeth. Yes. So you don't have to amputate perfectly healthy teeth. Um, and uh, we were just getting a lot of results in children. We didn't know what sleep apnea, or I didn't know what sleep apnea was 20 years ago. You know, we just didn't know. And, uh, but, you know, moms are reporting, oh, he's doing better in school and he's less defiant and he sleeps better and I don't hear him anymore sleeping and all of these wonderful things. That's just wonderful. Um, and then the parents would say, well, now that you fixed him, I want you to fix my problem. I go, oh, okay. And I started doing a lot of TMJ work on adults. And, uh, and when I did, um, patients would say, oh, you know, when I took, you know, I, my migraines are gone. I said, well, good for you. I didn't even know you had migraines. It's like, well, when I take out your appliance, my migraines come back. I thought, okay. The first time it happened, I didn't think anything of it. I just kind of thought it was a coincidence. And then less than a month or two months later, it happened again, the same exact thing. So I thought, okay, well, this can't be a coincidence. So I asked around and um, a lot of my colleagues, a lot of teachers were ex expressing that um, a very large percentage of tension type and migraine type headaches can come from inflammation in the jaw joint. Yes. And that made, you know, that to me was very, very exciting that I could be more effectual as a doctor by treating these issues. And then as I got more and more into treating it, then I combined the acupuncture with it and I got tremendous results. So I thought, you know, I could, I could do this for a living. I don't need to drill teeth anymore. You know, this could be fun. So is that exactly what you did? Like you moved on from basic dentistry, Correct. orthodontics, and then all the other things. So now you're doing acupuncture along with your what, dental, dental orthotic work? So, so yeah, so when, when I treat a TMJ disorder, I'm using an appliance at night to control their clenching. Yes. And if it's their sleep apnea that's causing their clenching, then, you know, we have to incorporate that as well. And my more advanced cases, I have to make a daytime appliance as well. And whatever's left over, we sort of finish it off with the acupuncture, if that makes sense, oh. right? This is one of the, the thing with TMJ disorders, because we swallow two to 3,000 times a day, and every time we do, our teeth come together and we chew and we talk and then we clench our teeth. This is one of those conditions 
that can't be treated by any other specialty to completion, right? Obviously, there's going to be some cases where there are acute TMJ problems and getting a chiropractic adjustment or getting an acupuncture treatment is going to be very effective, right? But for the majority of cases which are chronic, you're not going to be able to successfully treat them using any other modality. The reason being, in my experience anyway, the reason being is we constantly use them, right? So if someone has like a sprained ankle, right? You know, the doctor puts him in a booty and says, okay, well, stay off your feet. You know, try to use that leg as little as possible until you recover, right? When we have a jaw problem, we don't ever get a repose. We don't ever get a break, you know, and until you give that person an opportunity to, I mean, if you have a wound, right, if you have an open wound, it will heal itself, right? But if you poked it, you know, two to 3,000 times a day and causes it to like reopen every time you poked it, it will never heal and it will get much worse, right? So, it's that concept. We, we, for chronic TMJ disorders, we need the help of a properly trained dentist to make the, the correct oral appliances. I really don't know any other way. Okay. So let's dive into like headaches. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned tension, headaches, migraines are being helped by your procedures. Yeah. What do you think the mechanism is? So it's two totally different mechanisms for tension type and migraine type headache. So just so we're clear, a tension type headache is when the greater occipital and greater auricular nerves that go from the base of your skull to the front are being pinched between C2 and the occiput, okay? That's why when you get chiropractic adjustments, you feel amazing, right? It's like instantly the headache's gone, right? Well, then you go home and then you clench your teeth, right? And when you clench your teeth, you don't just clench up here, you clench your upper trapezius muscles like that. So you will get a new tension type headache (laughs) just from doing that. So by uh, breaking the pattern, by, you know, decreasing your efficiency in clenching your teeth at night and, you know, eventually it'll clear up on its own, but then you can get a chiropractic adjustment, for example, or an acupuncture adjustment, and then it'll stay resolved. Okay. So a migraine type headache is what we call a centrally mediated or centrally sensitized trigeminal disorder. So what, are you familiar? Has that, that term? But what, for our audience, what do you mean? Yeah, so a centrally sensitized disorder means rather than the pain coming from where it hurts, the pain is coming from the brain telling that body to be disordered or be in pain. So with a migraine, we have a big portion of our brain called the trigeminal ganglion, and we have many things going to it, right? Not just our nose, but our teeth, our jaws, part of our cervical spine. A lot of information is coming to it. And it's attached to, of course, the blood vessels of, uh, in the brain in V1 and V2. So when we have a chronic uh, jaw problem, which it would be like a chronic trigeminal disorder, um, then that can cause plastic changes to the brain. The, the brain actually goes through physical, tangible changes and can now cause problems like uh, a migraine or a neuralgia or something that's centrally mediated, right? Yeah. And so, and, and I've actually seen it. So I've actually had a number of cases where the patient has a very obvious menstrual migraine right? They get it a day or two before their period, and it's once a month. Um, Maybe occasionally it'll hit in the middle of the month, but it's predominantly on a monthly basis associated with their menstrual cycle, right? But they'll also have a TMJ problem. And I'll treat the TMJ problem, obviously, right? And their menstrual migraines will go away, right? Not because I did anything to the hormonal system, but because that bucket that was eventually filled and was overflowing and causing the migraine, well, now we just put a lot less into that bucket by addressing one component of that bucket of the central sensitization, which was the TMJ problem, mm. right? Mm. So, it, you know, the, the body and the brain are very, very complex. 
And there's, you know, many different way, things that could be the cause of people's issues. So I think the take home message for a lot of people here listening is, hey, if you've got menstrual migraines or migraines once a month, the cycles, period cycles, then get a dental assessment. Maybe you've got well, some TMJ stuff. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it that way. What I would put it is, one, if you're having migraines. Yeah go ahead and palpate your own jaws, you yeah. know, open your mouth, touch behind your jaw joint. If it's painful, that's a red flag. Um, if you know you clench your teeth and you have migraines, that's a big red flag. Okay. Yeah. If you have menstrual migraines and you have those other yes. <laughs> symptoms, then yeah. consult with a properly trained, um, I don't know if you call it a TMJ specialist out in Scotland, but, <laughs> you know, a properly trained dentist that treats these things. Yeah, I'm I'm in BC, um, in Vancouver. Uh, it's been a long time since I moved from Scotland, almost ten uh, years ago. Oh, um, lovely. But uh, well, we yeah, have a center. Here, you know, it's just like the states and uh, max. Yeah, well, max facility facial. We have we have a you know, but a max facial surgeon is not someone you want to see. They they represent less than one percent of the indication for for someone with a TMJ disorder. You want to avoid a surgeon if you can. Yeah. Right. But there are times where the only thing you can do is see an oral surgeon. Right. But I say you should exhaust every option until you do. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But we actually have a center. You know, my office is a franchise and I have two in L.A., right? One in Brentwood, one in Thousand Oaks. But we have 65 centers throughout the world and we have another one in Vancouver. And what's the name in Vancouver? the t they're all called the same thing tmj and sleep therapy center right and center is spelled the british way not the american way yeah okay c-e-n-t-e-r everybody no the c-e-n-t-r-e yeah I, it is funny i always got that mixed up it's cool <laughs> i used to get that mixed up <laughs> yeah so uh, so tmj and sleep therapy center of vancouver okay okay wonderful Okay, so you mentioned something in the middle of all that regarding inflammation and your, with your description here on video camera, you're pointing to your hand for those who are listening to audio and you were um, you know, giving the description of a wound in your hand and you were poking your finger onto mm -hmm. the hand there saying, well, if it was being poked all the time, then it wouldn't be healed, it would be inflamed, it would be diseased and it wouldn't get better. That's correct. But, you know, what do you think you know, are the core reasons for inflammation in your area? So in my area, if we're talking about TMJ, the, the core reason is clenching of the teeth at night. Teeth dysfunction. The, the, well, clenching the of the, the teeth, like, yeah. like, you know, clenching and grinding your teeth yeah. at night. Because if, you know, some, I have a lot, I've heard people get into arguments about clenching or grinding or, yeah. you know, I clench, but I don't grind or I grind and I don't clench. For goodness sakes, it's the same thing effectively, right? There's slight differences and we can measure them, but if it goes on long enough, the differences are irrelevant. They're going to end up in the same place. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so that's the biggest one, right? Of course, you can have whiplash. Of course, you can have improper orthodontics or improper dental care, but those are far more rare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and... Do you think about inflammation when you're treating with your acupuncture and electroacupuncture treatments? Yeah, no, we do. Um, you know, but, you know, for me, my issues uh, for my patients are associated with more systemic inflammation, right? So when someone has sleep apnea, the reason we call the centers TMJ and sleep therapy center, that it's very hard to find someone with a TMJ problem that doesn't have a sleep apnea problem. And it's very hard to find someone that has a sleep apnea problem that doesn't also have a TMJ problem, right? They, they really do go together. And part of the reason is one of the reasons why we clench our teeth is because of a component in sleep apnea. Yeah. So, but when we we're talking about inflammation caused by sleep apnea, we're definitely talking about a, a systemic inflammation right? It can be measured with C-reactive protein. It can be measured with interleukin-6, uh, TNF-alpha. These are all systemic markers for inflammation, right? And I don't know of any disease other than a genetic one 
that isn't either directly or indirectly associated with, with sleep apnea or that can be associated with sleep apnea. Wow. So the sleep apnea affects everything. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Um, yeah. Because, you know, we know, like, for example, they did a study, a huge study in uh, Jada on uh, depression. And they took, what was it, something like 1,400 patients in this study, uh, aged between 30 and 60, and they would rate their depression, right? They have what's called a Zung's depression scale. And they would rate their depression all the way from, I, I have sad thoughts, you know, daily, to I think about committing suicide daily, right? And wherever you land in between. And then they did sleep studies on them. And lo and behold, they found the severity of their sleep apnea and the severity of their depression were one-to-one, -one, right? And of course, we've had follow-up studies with anxiety that showed the same thing. We have probably over a thousand studies showing that either you, the use of a CPAP or an oral appliance when someone has what we call psychosocial issues like depression, anxiety, either eliminate or greatly reduces the psychosocial issue of depression mm -hmm. and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So that to me is huge, right? And that's what I'd like uh, physicians to be more mindful of, you know, rather than just prescribing medication um, for, you know, current manifestations of anxiety, depression, inflammation, mm -hmm. what have you. Uh, to actually just start to look at the cause. So for example, we know that hypertension can be caused by sleep apnea. That doesn't mean all hypertension is caused by sleep apnea, but we know, especially the ones, I always tell my friends, anecdotally, my friends who are physicians, I'll tell them, look, if you have a patient with hypertension and they're on three different types of industrial strength, you know, calcium channel blocker and diuretic, and you're just barely keeping it in check, okay? Um, I can guarantee you almost that that patient has high blood pressure, has sleep apnea, mm. yeah? Type two diabetes, right? We know that a lot of it can be caused by sleep apnea as well. And we say the word cause because again, we have over a thousand studies that we take patients with type two diabetes and sleep apnea, correct it with either an oral appliance or CPAP, and their type two diabetes results. Wow. Right, or their hypertension results. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so, I'm not surprised because once you talk about it and once I understand where you're coming from, I know inflammation is part of all the current diseases. Everything, it's all inflammation. Right, it's all, it's all inflammation, everybody. Yeah. Chronic disease equals inflammation, period. That's right. And um, yeah, so that's just wonderful, um, insightful. To, yeah. to be aware of that connection. Um, yeah, yeah. And you have to realize how new of a profession uh, sleep disorders is. It's like 30, 40 years old. Yeah. Right? Western medicine is about 200 years old, which is not old, by the way. 200 yeah. years is a drop in the bucket, especially when you compare Chinese medicine being, being between 2,500 and 5,000 yes. know, years old. And you know, when, when we came up with the scores of mild, moderate, and severe sleep apnea, this is how random and how arbitrary they came up with it. You ready for this? Go for it. They took, they took I believe it was 500 adult white males, and they looked at their health history, and they looked at their apnea score. And they said, okay, well, we noticed that when they're above 30, they have hypertension, diabetes, history of stroke, Parkinson's, whatever. And we noticed that when they're between 15 and 30, they're on the border. They have pre-hypertension, pre-diabetes. You know what I mean? They have yeah. elevated cholesterol levels. And when they're 5 to 15, we noticed that they're kind of sleepy. They're, they're tired. Okay, we call it excessive daytime sleepiness, right? Because tired is not good enough. We have to say excessive daytime sleepiness, right? And, and they found that those that had under five didn't exhibit any symptoms at all. So they call that within normal limits, right? And of course, when we finally got around testing women, we found that women um, 
after menopause present like men and women of childbearing age where they're estrogen dominant are way more sensitive than their male cohort. So someone, you know, whereas we say under five can be is within normal limits for a male, I've seen studies where uh, an AHI of four in women is associated with fibromyalgia, right? Because they are far more sensitive to that number. And then when we finally got around testing children, <laughs> we found out that children are extremely sensitive to that score because their concentration of REM and Delta in their sleep is so high. They found that very, very small children like toddlers, you know, uh, kindergartners that age, if they have just one an hour, one or maybe two an hour, that's severe, not wow. just positive, that's severe, right? So children with sleep apnea should be addressed first and foremost. The children, I mean, honestly, the children in our society should be our top priority. Yeah. 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 Because they'll, they'll soon become adults with systemic problems that, you know, need, you know, greater solutions that mm. could have just been eliminated earlier on. Mm. Well, it's been very insightful. You know, I, I must add TMG disorders to um, and dental issues to my long list of causes of inflammation mm -hmm. <laughs> that I try and address in my office and I look at in different ways through nutrition and breathing, nasal breathing. Um, really? It ties in a lot to do with what you're talking about. Indeed, it does. Indeed, it does. But you can order a sleep study. Yeah. You know, a sleep study, whether you do it in home or in lab, can be a nice screening tool. Mm -hmm. for people with sleep apnea mm -hmm. just to get the baselines and just go from there exactly okay excellent yeah. well i really enjoyed having you on today and, and talking about the uh, intricate nature of how pain is associated with sleep apnea and dental um issues you know orthodontic issues and how you're treating it not just where you are but around the world it's amazing yeah. Um, as a franchise so congratulations on um, the effects of all your studies over the years and what you're doing to highlight these issues um, here on planet earth <laughs> <laughs> it's so, my uh, sincere pleasure thank you thank you is there any last things you would like to share maybe you, well i mean if the clinics around North yeah America, so TMB and sleep apnea clinics well if you want to find uh, a like me as a doctor, you're in California, you would just go to tmjla.com or tmjconejo.com. Yeah. If you want to look internationally to see if someone is near you, uh, you would go to TMJ Therapy Center. And remember, center is the British way. Yes. Uh, and then they'll have, they have two options. They have a, a patient portal and a doctor portal. You'll check on the patient portal and they have a map and you can find someone in your area hopefully Perfect. we have over 65 so you yeah. hopefully have one near you okay well everybody listening to this please check it out you may be undiscovering um a hidden cause of your pain that you never knew before that's right so once again thank you dave it's been great and um i hope to meet you one day in person yep you're welcome to visit anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye for Cheers, now. Cheers. Yeah.